this is Chelsea from Paper Octeo Studio and today I'm participating in the Creative Arts Collaboration event hashtag love winter art. You can take that hashtag type it into your search bar on YouTube and you will come up with hundreds of videos with creative people making creative things about winter art. So I hope that you do that. I started this 10 by 10 wood canvas a while ago for a different project and I put a layer of clear gesso and then a stencil with some 3D gloss gel and I let that dry and then I never finished the project so I'm using it today and I've got some different colors of turquoise and blue and some glazing medium and I just used the glazing medium to make the layers thinner and then I put it on there rubbed it off put it on rubbed it off as you saw with the baby wipe and that's how I got my background then I got out my round jelly plate and used some acrylic paint white with my small brayer on there and I used that as a quote ink pad with my acrylic paint to stamp lots of different size snowflakes from a Stampin' Up set that's probably discontinued at this point but I'm making a snowy background on my canvas and then I'm just going to put that aside and let it dry while I do the next section using your your little jelly plate as a acrylic ink pad for your stamps works really great and I hope you guys all try that also you can use up the rest of that paint with your fan brush to make splatters like you see me doing on the screen lots of splatters love doing that so while that's drying I'm gonna prepare my focal image and I'm using a piece of cardstock to draw on I'm using a soft graphite mechanical pencil and a kneaded eraser and I'm going to be drawing my skater girl and this is all you know pretty self-explanatory I'm drawing so I will go ahead and put some music at this point and let you just watch because I don't have much to say about it <laughs> So now I'm going to start in with my coloring. I've got out my my flesh tones and all different flesh tones that I like to use for skin. And then I've got some acrylic paint on my palette with water. And I'm going to use my Neocolor 2's color in the color and then activate that or blend it with that soupy white acrylic paint. The reason that I do that is because the the Neocolor 2's are water soluble and so if I go and put other stuff on them later when I'm doing mixed media which I do I put this in, on top of that and that on top of this and I go crazy so <laughs> I want to kinda set those so that they don't smear later so that's how come I mix in the acrylic paint it gives a little bit of a plastic quality and it also helps me to vary the tint I can make it lighter or darker depending on how much of the paint I mix in with the water as I'm going with my brush and I'm just going to be adding lots of layers um, to make the skin look more translucent and to give it a lot, a lot of different colors shining through I'm just putting different layers of, of colors like um, salmon and pink and 
ochre and all those type of colors one on top of the other and putting in shadows where the face is sunk in and highlights where the face protrudes got some pink for the cheeks I've got just all different colors and and I'm just gonna be doing this for a while I'm I'm pretty fussy when I do this I I spend a bit of time trying to make it look not realistic because this is a whimsical character but to give it the idea that it's it's really skin sometimes I apply the the, the water crayon right to the paper and other times I will you'll see me using my brush on the end of the crayon to pick up the pigment and just apply it that way I do it both ways I'm I'm not you know it just depends on on the effect I'm trying to get the only parts of her skin that will be showing is her face and that little top part of her legs above her leggings so those are the only parts that I'm coloring right now eventually I'll be coming in with some Posca pens which are an acrylic paint in a pen form I'll just be using the white to add some highlights and then also I'll be using Pet artist pens which are India ink in a brush form of a marker which are very permanent and I guess This is the last part that I will be coloring with my various markers and pens. The rest of it is going to be collaged with different scrap papers that I have. 
I've got a lot of different pieces of jelly prints, little pieces of scrapbook papers. Um, I have them color coordinated in boxes and I've showed that on another video before when I did a little studio tour before a video. So the crazy thing I'm doing here is I am, well first I, I didn't quite draw her, her final boot there because my paper was a little bit too short. So I just taped an extra piece on there and drew the boot so that I would have the whole pattern. But I cut off her head and cut off her hat and then I'm getting out some pinks at the moment. I'll also be getting out some purples in a bit but right now I'm just doing the pink. And I've got her hat and I'm cut it cutting it out. I'm sorry that I go off screen. It's because I'm, I'm have, I have it close to me so that I can see what I'm doing and that pulls it off the screen. It's hard to cut and hold it out in front of you. <laughs> so that's just what happens, but I'm I'm trying to correct it. I'm still new to this. So as you saw, I, I turned the hat upside down and I glued it onto that little piece of deli paper that's been printed. And then I took another piece of deli paper and I traced her skirt. And now I'm getting out some purples and I'm going to be using my liquid matte medium to just put different purples little pieces and bits on top of that and then once I cut it out it becomes a collage piece. Deli paper is very lightweight and so it really doesn't add bulk and this is a very easy way to get collage pieces cut to the size that you want but of course you have to let them dry so I'm moving on to her leggings and tracing those except for that I mess up my paper wasn't big enough so I have to start over <laughs> you know these things happen I leave my mistakes so that nobody thinks that anybody's perfect everybody makes mistakes there are opportunities to learn more so now I'm looking for another piece of paper and I was thinking about teal but then I decided I didn't want to do that because the background has so much teal so I went uh, back in my purple bucket and I got out this one that has a really nice blend of teal and purple and light and darks. This is actually a jelly print that was sent to me by a friend in Australia named Tracy and I really love this print. I hate to be tearing it up like this. Sorry Tracy, but <laughs> I needed it for my project. <laughs> so I'm just um, taking little bits from here and there and, and using my liquid matte medium to, uh, to put them on the deli paper. But remember, deli paper is kind of see-through, like tissue paper, so I can see the, the tracing from the back, and I will be, be able to cut these out in a bit. Now I'm tracing her scarf, her, her sweater, and her mittens, and doing the same process again, putting on different colors. I'm doing a uh, a pink scrap I think. Oh, I cut that out so that I could see what it looks like. That's her little skirt. Looks great. I love it. I love the look of that layery, you know, random collage. That's just one of my favorite things. And there's her leggings. Decided to make her sweater pink so I grabbed one of those pink scraps. This one is actually from my drop paper. When I'm not making videos, I really let my drop paper get very, very dirty, but I was told that it distracts from what I'm doing on screen if I have a big dirty mess in the background, so I, I started putting new paper down when I make a video. Then I decided to try to use my craft sheet, but it has a lot of glare, so then I decided that didn't work either, so it's just going to be a new piece of paper when I make a video, and then I'll take it off and continue to grunge up the one that's underneath that's my plan anyway, who knows. Okay, so I cut out her hat, but I wanted it to have white along the the headband part and then on the little tuft on the end. And so I just have some jelly paper that has some white acrylic on it from when I was cleaning off my jelly plate actually. And I'm kind of just I'm layering it. I'm putting little strips and little layers and then putting those on the hat. 
And I've got to do her skates. I think that's the last part. So I have to go over and grab my brown color box and got a couple different pieces of brownish papers and I'm collaging those on. Okay, I've got my canvas back and I'm just auditioning the pieces, cutting out the pieces, seeing what they look like on there. Cut out her scarf, cut out her mittens, cut out her sweater. The boots are still kind of wet, so I'm not going to cut them out right this minute. But It's looking pretty cute. She kind of looks like a paper doll at this point with all her different pieces. <laughs> What does she look like? Okay. Cute. I think so anyway. So before I start sticking her down, I'm going to make something for her to skate on. She needs an ice patch. And yeah, that would be a pretty small pond. <laughs> That's a very small pond, but you get the idea. It's, it's just, you know, giving the, I the idea that she's skating on ice. And I'm using some titanium white fluid acrylic, and I'm not letting it completely go. You know, I'm, I'm leaving some of the background to shine through because it would reflect, the sky would reflect off of the ice in some places where it might have cut little pieces that made it shiny, you know what I mean? Part of it will be shiny and part of it would be where there's kind of like snow because the sharp skates make kind of a snow effect by cutting it, cutting the ice. Then that's just a medium gray tone to just add a little bit of shadow there. And now I'm going to stick her down because I have so many different types of papers. I've got thin papers and thicker papers. I'm going to use golden matte medium gel. It's, you know, thicker than the liquid that I was using for the collaging. And I'm going to use that to stick everything down because it'll give me, it'll, it'll give more balance between the different types of papers that I have. So starting with their leggings, then her legs. <laughs> and I, I sometimes leave pieces where I can stick one piece to another so that there's no break. So you can see that I have some white that will be covered by the skirt and I had some white that was covered by the leggings on that piece. And then the skirt goes over the top of the sweater on this one. And the mittens will go over the top of the ends of the sweater. It just gives more continuity. There's no break where something doesn't quite meet up if you didn't cut it particularly well. And on most of the pieces I'm applying, well on all the pieces I'm applying it on the back and then putting it on, but on this face part I'm not going over the face part. I'm, I'm not so sure that it's not going to smear and I don't want to smear it, so I just put a very thick coat on the back and then I went around the edges to make sure they were all sealed. But everything else I'm just going right over the top because I know it's just paper or acrylic or whatever. Not a big deal. And there's the final bit. That's her little mittens. And I went to shade. I got out my um, black Stabilo, which I'm going to shade with. But then I said, wait, she just has boots. She doesn't have skates. <laughs> so I got a Zig Painty Pin, which has silver an oil-based paint in it and I'm just drawing the little blades of the skates on the bottom of the boots first. And then I'm going to get my black pen and my water barrel brush and I'm just going to be, I'm, I'm unifying the things that are glued on top with the things that are in the background by adding a shadow all the way around and then blending it out with the water. This is a very effective way to 
make things more unified so that it just doesn't look like you've stuck some paper on top of something with some glue and called it good. You could do this with any water-based pencil. It's just this Stabilo is really, really water reactive and it will write over anything. So that's why it's called an all pencil, I think, because you could even write on glass. You can write on anything. So as I'm doing my shadow around, I'm also adding a few shadows like under the armpits and right there on her sides where her breast would be. <laughs> and um, uh, under the hat, I, w I went along, you know, just really lightly with the excess pigment that's on my water brush. I'm just kind of adding a few extra little shadows in. I think this is a really effective. I, I like the way it looks. I could have taken a, a regular black pen and just given it a hard line all the way around like an illustration would look, but I prefer this kind of blended look better. Especially when I had add the highlights with the white pen at the end. That looks really good. Which it's almost time to do that. So just adding a little bit more definition around her face where it's kind of blending into her hair. It seems to all be one tone. Okay. So now I've got my white fine tip Posca. This is an acrylic paint in a marker form. And I use these on almost every single project that I do, no matter what it is. I love these pens, especially the white one. I can add highlights really quickly and effectively with it. I can blend it slightly with my finger, like just now I'm putting it on the chin and the nose and then bl just touching it. And it blends it in really well and adds a nice bright highlight. And then I'm just doing s kind of scribbly lines around everything else, just to give a little bit of definition to her outfit and everything. And I just, I think this is a pretty cool effect. I like to do this. Adding some little kick pleats there on her skirt. Just a hint of kick pleats. I didn't, you know, go as far as to add shading and the whole thing. I just gave it like a little highlight with the white. So now she's done and I'm thinking to myself, need something else. So I add a shadow around the uh, pond. That helps. But it needs, it needs more. So I take a black pen and I draw in a little hill behind her to give it more of a horizon line because yeah, the, there is a horizon where you've got the pond. You could consider that, you know, a baseline, but it looked better with an extra horizon line. And then I decided there needs to be, she's outside, so there needs to be some plants and trees and things. And so I start drawing some little vine shapes around the pond, the very, very small pond. And then I, I draw a tree. And I don't want these to be colored in. I'm not going to make these compete with the focal image. They're just going to be black and white. So I'm just drawing with my Stabilo All Pencil until I'm satisfied, which I had four trees, that wasn't enough. Needed to have an odd number, so I added another little tiny tree. Then that one, uh, well then I'm, I'm activating with my my water brush. And then there's one corner that doesn't have anything in it, so I end up adding a moon. And we're getting very close to the end. Just for reference, this project took me 2 hours 14 minutes to complete. I've obviously sped this up a lot so that I can fit it into a reasonable amount of time that some might someone might actually watch. So very soon the camera is going to cut off. You will see me adding the white to everything, but you don't see me fill in the moon because the battery died <laughs> and I didn't know. But we're almost done, so it's not a big deal. But that last little filling in of the moon and the few little things didn't get recorded. And here's the uh, close-ups. 
gives you an idea of what it looks like in a still picture. You can see I put yellow and a little bit of white on the moon just to make it look like she was outside enjoying herself skating on an icy pond. I've never actually done that myself. It would probably be fun, but I'd probably fall right down on my bottom. So I hope you enjoyed this, this video, and I hope that you go check everybody else's videos out. And that's it for now. Bye-bye. <laughs>